Shalom. All praises, all power, all glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahushai, Bahashem, Bakaha Kodash. Yahweh, being the name of the Father, who the world and when he calls God, Yahweh, meaning he exists. Bahashem, meaning in the name, Yahweh Shai, who the world even calls Jesus Christ. Yahweh Shai, meaning he is salvation. Bahashem, in the name, Rakaha Kodash, Spirit Holy. Double honors to the apostles and elders of great millstone who teach one and rule well, who taught me this truth. Peace, salutation to the Akyam, the fellow laborers, the hopeful elect. Pushing this truth at risk of their own lives throughout the four corners of the earth. To the Akwatim, listen and listen and learn in sincerity and in truth and in silence. Shalom. Akyam, meaning brothers, Akwatim, meaning sisters. Shalom, meaning peace be unto you. It's your brother Shema from the GMS Toronto camp here in Toronto with another lesson. And we'll get right into it. So, some news and prophecy. All right, we'll hit, we'll hit a couple um headlines. And we'll hit a couple of headlines. And then, Lord willing, we'll attach some scripture. I will start with this one right here. Matter of fact, let's get a scripture in the in the um second address nine. Right, because we're measuring the times diligently. What does that mean? We're, we're, we're looking at what's taking place. And we're attaching uh, scriptures that we were able to uh, know what time, what, what time we are in according to prophecy. Second is just nine. Second Ezra 9, verse 1, it reads, He answered me then and said, Measure thou the time diligently in itself. Right? The angel speaking to Ezra, measure the times. Diligently. Right? The other apostle, Tahar, did a lesson yesterday. Uh, that that uh, we must be diligent in this thing, man. Right? No time off. Right, steady pumping out, uh, steady blowing the trumpet. All right, let's get, let's hold that. Joel two. Salakia. Joel 2 and 1, and it reads, says here, the terrible visitation. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion, right? Blow the trumpet, right? Warning. Blowing the trumpet is warning. In Zion, right, the, 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 the Israelites, Israel being a people before it's a place. And sound an alarm in my holy mountain, the Israelites. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord Yahweh cometh. For it is nigh at hand, right? So this this trumpet being blown is a warning. Warning the Israelites, Israel being a people before it's a place, that the the the, the coming day of the Lord Yahweh Shai is coming, and it is near, right? It's close, right? Back in Second Ezra nine and one, he answered me then and said, "Measure thou the time diligently in itself, and when thou seest part of the signs pass." Which I have told thee before, right? The time, the times past, the prophecies, right? These prophecies are playing out in real time, right? Playing out in real time. Then, verse two. Then shalt thou understand that it is the very same time wherein the highest will begin to visit the world which he made, right? So we're seeing things take place. Uh, wars and rumors of wars, uh, uh, earthquakes, 
uh, civil unrest, upwards of the people. Right, this election is coming up. Right, this headline right here says most in the new survey expect expecting violence after election day. Right, so most Babylonians Americans are expecting violence after the election. It says here more than six in ten Americans are preparing for violence after the after the November five election, according to a poll released Thursday that signals deep dissonance in the country amid the amid the, amid the hotly contested White House race. Right, and the fifth of November is uh, eleven days away, I believe. Yep, 11 days away. Right? 62% of those surveyed in the Scripps News Ipsos poll said violence after Election Day is very likely or somewhat likely, including a majority of Republicans, 59%, and Democrats, 70%. Right? Violence. Right? What does prophecy say, man? Right? Scripture say, uh, prophecy says, uh, I will set Egyptian against Egyptian. Right, that's that's left versus right, blue versus uh, blue versus red, right? Egyptian spiritual Egypt, spiritual Sodom. Isaiah nineteen, verse two in the NLT, and it reads, "I will make Egyptian fight against Egyptian, right? American against American, brother against brother." Neighbor against neighbor, city against city, province against province, right? You know, um, whichever way it goes with this election, whoever wins, it doesn't matter. There's going to be turmoil, right? Look at this. Look at this uh, article. And this is from uh, today, October 24th. Yesterday, Salakia, October 24th, 2020, 2024, the hopeful year of Jacob's trouble coming to pass. It says local law enforcement arrested a suspect who officials said admitted to committing arson, but said his actions weren't related to the election, right? Ballots damage in, in USPS mailbox fire in Phoenix, right? He says he says it's not it's not related to the election, right? But it, it goes to show you, you know. Um, Esau is a mad scientist, right? And if ballots can be damaged or go missing or be burned, right? Because remember, four years ago, the big fight was that uh, uh, it was stolen, right? That was Trump's uh, uh, gripe, his complaint. A blue U.S. Postal Service mailbox in Phoenix was set on fire overnight, damaging several ballots and other pieces of mail, authorities said. Right, because uh, Babylon, America, they, they have this whole mail-in ballot thing, right? Local law enforcement officials arrested a 35-year-old man in connection to the incident, which occurred at about 1.20 a.m. local time Thursday. The suspect identified as Dieter B. Clo Clofcorn admitted committing arson but said it was not related to the election, police said at a news conference. Why that was his desire, we did not get that far into it, said the spokesman, Officer Rob Scare. The mailbox was a drive-up collection box for mail at the post office at 3905 North 7th Avenue, said Rob McDale, a fire spokesman. spokesman. The fire was extinguished and the area has been reopened. Right, so this is once again, you know, uh, <laughs> There's bugged out demons on people out here, man. You know, you have red. Yeah, yeah. You have those that are backing the backing the red. Those that are backing the blue, Republicans, dem, uh, Democrats, right? But they all they all answer to the, the, the their leaders. Their their puppet leaders. They answer to the um. They answer to the same uh, um. Um. Uh, Higher ups who are the elites. Second Ezra's fifteen 
verse 16. Verse 15. 14th verse, woe to the world and them that dwell therein, for the sword and the destruction draweth nigh, and one people shall stand up and fight against another, and swords in their hands, right? Civil unrest. People are going to be armed and fighting one another. America the Great, Babylon the Great. For there shall be sedition among men, right? Sedition meaning rebellion among men and invading one another. They shall not regard their kings nor princes. And the course of their action shall stand in their power, right? Not regard the kings, not regard their kings nor princes. They're not going to care what a governor has to say. They're not going to care if it's martial law. And the course of their action shall stand in their power. They're going to do what they want. The law of, vi the, the, the law of violence is going to rule the land, right? Right now, people's animalistic behavior is kept in check via the, via, via the law. Police. Right? When that goes out the window, right, all hell's going to break loose. People ain't going to care. Right? The scriptures say, uh, in the last days, perilous times shall come. That's in Second uh, Timothy. Second Timothy 3 and 1. And it reads, the headline is, difficult times will come, right? And we're about to go into these difficult times, a time like no other, the time of Jacob's trouble. It reads, this know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come, right? You're going to this word perilous. In the Greek, strong G5467. Kalepos. Hard to do, to take, to approach, hard to bear, troublesome, dangerous, harsh, fierce, savage, right? Savage times, man. That's a word Jake likes to throw around in the world today. Savage. In the Strongs, through their idea of reducing the strength, difficult i.e. dangerous or by implication, furious, fierce, peerless, right? So people ain't going to care, man, right? Scriptures also say the love of many shall wax cold, right? These are the times we're in, man, right? When people's backs are against the wall, they're unable to provide for themselves. Inflation is through the roof. They've, lo they've lost their home. They've lost their car note, right? They, they got mouths to feed and they can't provide. You have an election, which is a, which is a circus, right? Cell phones cut off, can't afford groceries, they resort to violence, right? This one here is on Newsmax, October 25th, 2024. McDonald's E. coli crisis exposes produce safety risks, right? And this is just another poly crisis, right? Moves by major U.S. fast food chains to temporarily scrub fresh onions off their menus on Thursday after the vegetable was named as the likely source of an E. coli outbreak at McDonald's laid bare the recurring nightmare for restaurants. Produce is a bigger problem for restaurants to keep free of contamination than beef. Onions are likely the culprit in the McDonald's E. coli outbreak across the Midwest and some Western states that has sickened 49 that has sickened 49 people and killed one, the U.S. Department of Agriculture said late on Wednesday. The company pulled the quarter pounder off its menu at one fifth of its 100 salakia at one fifth of its 14,000 U.S. restaurants. In past years, beef patties dominated the docket, the dockets of foodborne illness. Lawyers before U.S. federal health regulators cracked down on beef contamination after an E. coli, e. coli Salakia outbreak linked to jack-in-the-box burgers hospitalized more than 170 people across states and killed four. As a result, beef-related outbreaks became much rarer, experts said. Produce is, is a much harder problem, right? And th this food, listen, because right, they're blaming this on uh, onions. Experts say the biggest difference is that beef is cooked while fresh produce, by definition, is not cooked. 
proper cooking is a silver bullet against contamination, right? So, you know, the 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 the, the, the um uh, staff of bread. Let me get that real quick. I said Deuteronomy. Where is it in Ezekiel? I think I'm mixing two um, scriptures. Ezekiel 4, I want this one, and I want this one. Ezekiel 4 and 16, moreover, he said unto me, son of man, behold, I will break the staff of bread in Jerusalem. Right, this is going into the time of uh, um, um, the, the uh, Babylonian captivity. Right. Prophesying the, the, the siege. Right. But uh, it's twofold. Right. No new thing under the sun. Because if you read further up in the scripture, uh, it says we shall eat our defiled bread among the Gentiles. Right. The Israelites are still scattered throughout the four corners of the earth, eating defiled breads, GMO foods, unhealthy foods, uh, chemical laden foods. Right. That's why that's why uh, uh, there's so much tumors and, and, and cancers. Right. So the Lord, uh, the Lord is disrupting the food chain, man. Uh, the, the food supply, the source of foods, the quality of food. Esau eating the mad scientist, you know, he's GMO and everything. He's got to use a uh, uh, over fertilizer, the, the earth. Right. But the way things are now, it's unsustainable. Ezekiel 4 and 16, moreover, he said unto me, son of man, behold, I will break the staff of bread in Jerusalem. Right. You two thirds. A lot of two thirds are going to starve to death in the times that are coming. And they shall eat bread by weight and with care. Right. They're going to ration their food. And they shall drink water by measure and with astonishment. Right. These are the times that are coming. Food is going to be so scarce you're going to have to ration it. We got to ration it because we don't know if we're going to be able to have food tomorrow. Right? That's it on that. Let's get this next article here. It says here, Iran ready to deploy secret weapon more powerful than nukes. Top general warrants. Right? Wars and rumors of wars, man. Let me hold that. This is from uh, the People's Voice, October tw October twenty fifth, twenty twenty four. Right, and just just going back on uh, that, that that food thing, the E. coli. That's a pestilence, right? That's a pestilence. We're in these these are the times we're in, man. It says here, according to Iranian Brigadier General Ibrahim Rastami, the ban on Iran developing nuclear weapons forced it into developing something far superior. Naturalnews.com reports, speaking to the media, Ostami, who previously worked as a secretary of the Development and Equipment Commission of the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps, indicated that he supports a review to change portion of, Iran, of Iran's non-nuclear military doctrine, but that the per parliamentarians are unaware of some aspects of what it currently states because the doctrine contains highly classified and top secret information. The, the Iranian military, according to Rastami, has already deployed in the past weapons that are far superior to nuclear weapons, including on one occasion in 2019 when, it, when Iran attacked oil tankers in the United Arab Emirates. When Trump wanted to reduce our oil exports, there were a number of tactical operations, Rastami claimed in a statement. I will not say who carried them out, but five tankers who blew up in the highly guarded port of Fujairah. They did not, not they did not even know where the attack came from. 
They even filed a complaint with the UN and the UAE accused us, but could not provide evidence. These are some of the examples I can mention. Um, Yeah, they said on that. But we know according to the scriptures, right? The scriptures speak of uh scriptures speak of uh um nuclear fire, man. All right, what's that scripture in uh I wanna grab that scripture in uh, uh Zechariah? Zechariah. Zechariah 14. Or is it 12? Zechariah 14 and 12. And it reads, And this shall be the plague wherewith the Lord Yahweh will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem, right? The plague being the missiles, right? Thermonuclear intercontinental ballistic missiles, right? So this guy is saying something far superior. We know the destruction is coming with the destroying wind, the missiles, right? What he may, what, what, what I perceive him to be saying is that he had, that he possesses <laughs> uranium rods. Right, he said uh, it's been said for a long time that they don't, they haven't, they've been unable to make one. Right, that's why the, pol the the policing has been so heavy on them not to get one. Right. Now he's uh boasting that they have something far superior. There's another scripture, Isaiah nine and five. Let me see what this says in the, in the NLT. NLT, the boots of the warrior and the uniforms bloodstained by war will all be burned. They will be fuel for the fire, right? What causes, what causes... <laughs> People and, and the clothing on them to be fuel for the fire. Thermonuclear intercontinental ballistic missiles. Right, back in uh, Zechariah 14 and 12. And this shall be the plague wherewith the Lord, Yahweh Bashim Yashai, will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. Right, and, and the Israelites, Jerusalem, Israel being a people before it's a place, Jerusalem being a, peop, uh, a people before it's a place, they're in possession of the enemy, they're POWs. Right, all nations are fought against the Israelites, beginning with the, the Edomites. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet. That's that destroying wind, the lake of fire. And their eyes shall consume away in their holes, and their tongue shall consume away in their mouth. That destroying wind, that nuclear fire, that's what causes that. Right? Thermonuclear destruction. Right. This is how this is how this third war, this third this third woe, Salakia, will be fought. Missiles. Right. Right. In a spiritual sense, the eyes, which shall uh, uh, consume away, the eyes being uh, uh, Esau's Esau's uh, light, his his uh, his left hand knowledge. Right. His occultism, his sorcery, right? The tongues, in a spiritual sense, is 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 philosophy, his witchcraft, right? All that's gonna be done away with. All that's gonna be burnt up, right? And the elect will be delivered from the destruction. Lord willing, we're of that number. As a matter of fact, let's close with that. Revelation uh, 15, right? Because uh, the elect are gonna be looking down. says here, seen from heaven, right? Up there in the, the ozone, 
from the chariots, what the world even calls UFOs. This is a vision of John, John the Revelator. Revelation 15, 1, and I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous, seven angels having the seven last plagues, for in them is filled up the wrath of Yahweh Bashim al Shai, right? And seven means completion. Verse 2, and I saw, as it were, a sea of glass mingled with fire, right? The sea of glass mingled with fire. The sea of glass being the uh, uh, the ozone, right? Looking down through the ozone at the fire, mingled with fire, that fire, the destruction, the destroying wind, the lake of fire. What's going to cause that? The missiles. And them that have gotten the victory over the beast, who's going to get the victory over the beast? The elect, Lord willing, we're of that number. The beast being the, uh, the system, uh, Salakia. The beast being NATO, the EU, uh, America the Great. And over his image, right, the image being his system, right, Rome 2.0. The system of Rome. Right, we're in Rome all over again. America the Great is the, the, is the revised Roman Empire. And over his mark, his, his karagma, physical mark. Right, the elect are going to get victory over this, right? The Revelation 13, verse 16 on down. And over the number of his name, stand on the sea of glass, the sea of glass, the ozone, having the harps of Yahweh Bashim and Ashai, right? From the ships, what the world may cause UFOs, right? The chariots, right? Lord will wear that number. So with that, call Allah Yahweh Bahashem Yahushai, Bahashem Rahakwadash, double honors to the apostles and elders and elders of great millstone to teach on Ruwell. Shalom to the hopeful elect.